Hello my friends and welcome to another episode of Inside Out Electronics and today we're gonna take a look uh, and troubleshoot this uh, lens. This is 70-200 Canon lens uh, 2.8L. Um, this is one of my most favorite and most used lenses and it issues with some crazy focus hunting now. It used to be perfectly focused and balanced lens. So I don't know what is the issue. We're gonna take a look together. We're gonna open it up and see if you're gonna see some problems. If this is actually broken off the focus lens uh, f mechanism, we're gonna try to uh, mitigate the problem. If not, we would have to repair it. Um, I think autofocus is actually working. The problem is the lens that it hunts like crazy uh, between front and back focus and when you take a picture you will end up with image uh, with subject out of focus focus being behind the subject or in front I don't know what is the issue um, it uh, exhibits the problem with, from the, to different degree on, dif on different cameras so it's not the camera of the focus problem in same time other lenses on the same cameras works fine so I assume this is the lens so um, the, I think we don't need to talk much we have to actually try to get to the point of autofocus module and it's I think it's somewhere over here we're gonna disassemble the lens from this end and see what we get so stay with me if you want to see how this lens built how this wonderful lens built hello my friends and welcome to another episode of inside out electronics and today we're gonna take a look uh, and troubleshoot this uh, lens this is 70 to 200 Canon lens uh, 2.8 L um, this is one of my most favorite and most used lenses and it issues with some crazy focus hunting now. It used to be perfectly focused and balanced lens. So I don't know what is the issue. We're gonna take a look together. We're gonna open it up and see if you're gonna see some problems. If this is actually broken off the focus lens uh, mechanism, we're gonna try to uh, mitigate the problem. If not, we would have to repair it. Um, I think autofocus is actually working. The problem is the lens that it hunts like crazy uh, between front and and back focus and when you take a picture you will end up with image uh, with subject out of focus focus being behind the subject or in front I don't know what is the issue um, it uh, exhibits the problem with, from the, to different degree on, dif on different cameras so it's not the camera of the focus problem in same time other lenses on the same cameras works fine so I assume this is the lens so um, the, I think we don't need to talk much we have to actually try to get to the point of autofocus module and it's I think it's somewhere over here we're gonna disassemble the lens from this end and see what we get so stay with me if you want to see how this lens built how this wonderful lens built all right so we're gonna start from this end so we have bionot over here we have to unscrew all that and keep uh, digging uh, further I'm gonna use my precision tools over here I'm gonna use this little cup or lens cover, back lens cover as a screw holder, not to lost any screws. If you're making this sort of work, you have to make sure you have pretty clean environment. You have to wear your gloves, not to smear your fat all over the front or rear glass element, especially rear because it's much harder to clean. Front has pretty much permanent filter on it, but rear obviously doesn't. Okay, now you have to. For this you need smaller tip. I'm gonna keep this one over here where our smaller tip. Let's try this one. If no, I gonna get even yeah, this is gonna work. A little tiny self topper. And should be another on this side. Actually, wow, way more than the other lenses. Other lenses usually have two. This one has four. 
Whoa. That's really good. Oh, I see. I think I, I think I understand why. Because there is also this plastic retainer. Yes, so this is not just for the contact group. This is also for the plastic retainer. Okay, five. So now we have to nicely... Interesting. Usually it's good idea to actually pull it out to free a retainer and a bayonet. So we're gonna put them here. Oh wow, it's very dirty. <laughs> it's back. So I'll have an opportunity to clean this up. Okay. As well. So here's the main board, which is actually very nicely done. The, instead of the flat flags, they use this um, those bunch of wires, which uh, which makes it way more repairable. Because flat flags, if flat flags goes, it's pretty much game over. This can be repaired, which is very nice. Um, yeah, sometimes it's not really. It's really hard to tell. I think there is a whole bunch of screws way deep down there. So let me try to. Okay, I decided to use different screwdriver, which has a little bit longer shaft over here, and it's easier to yeah reach this tiny. Hmm, also magnetic. So you have to memorize what bolt go where to put it back in the same spot. So this little bit longer guys goes in the. Ta-da! Okay. So now we have our um, uh, back cover out. So this is complete die cast aluminium chunk. It has some dirt again. I will. I'm gonna clean this up. Actually, quite has quite a lot of dust in it. So this has to be cleaned up as well, just to make sure um, it's not gonna propagate more dust inside the lens. Okay, here we are. So let me think how... I never actually disassembled this lens, but I have experience, so I like some dust balls everywhere here. So this is the main board, which is uh, pretty awesome, because in many other cases the main board is actually wraps around, so this is easier when it's like modular like this. Um, Okay, but let me understand how to get a little bit further down. Hmm. Well, there is a pretty high chance that I have to pull this rubber thing apart away, I mean. Let me see that, because in many other lenses that's how it was. I'm gonna use something like this, this is plasticky thing, to make sure I'm not gonna damage the rubber or lens body and it's usually pretty easy to do you just need to free it up like this and make sure you're not gonna rip anything if no if there is no screws underneath I'm gonna have a nice chance to actually wash it I'm gonna wash it with soap get rid of a bunch of residue and dirt which is actually embedded over the years inside it okay I was wrong there is no screws here oh no here here is the screw so here's the rubber band it's not that dirty but it has a little bit of uh, dirt I'm gonna clean that up okay so here is the screw one screw two two screws so have to unscrew those to remove this um, ring so this is a F ring let me put it into the interesting is actually it's not engaging 
Oh, this is zoom ring. Sorry, I'm wrong. So this is zoom. This is focus ring. Focus ring is over here. Okay. Okay, zoom ring. It's a bit dirty. Has some kind of residue. A little nice cute. Whoa. Maybe it's a glue of some sort to make sure they stay. Yeah, it is clearly glue. Okay. Wow, take a look at this. A little bit more complicated than I expected. This is the uh, AF mechanism. Uh, sorry, the zoom mechanism. So look at those rollers. So, and this is also this tells the camera uh, what zoom position uh, we are here. So this is just specifically for the zoom locators. Just, yeah, I'm not gonna touch this because it looks like it's all covered in grease. And there are some people fingerprints, not mine because I'm in gloves, but there are some other people fingerprints here. Interesting, maybe someone was already opening this lens ages ago because I didn't touch it. Okay, again, it's all dirty here, so it has to be cleaned up as I assemble it back. So now I have to think how to get even deeper because the focus seems like somewhere here, so I was wrong. Oh! Looks like this wire is actually it's not making good contact over here. Have to look closer. Yeah, this flat flex is like wobbling. Yeah, maybe that's okay. No big deal. Right. That looks intense and I'm kind of reluctant to pull this apart, but I don't think
So we're gonna use some cyanocrylate here. Um, yeah, we'll see how that's gonna work. Ethyl 2 cyanocrylate. to let it dry and we'll see how sturdy that gonna be if this not gonna work I gonna clean it up and use more appropriate glue than this cheap one I got but I hope that's gonna help us okay well I'll probably take till tomorrow and see where we end up with all right we have glued this part successfully looks like it's holding well Let's try to assemble this device back together and test if we were successful in our um, attempt to repair it. Also, I'm not sure if this AF drive requires any extra attention. Okay, well, I'm gonna tighten, I'm gonna clean up all those lens elements, gonna tighten, all, tighten uh, as much as possible all those screws and see if we are successful. But before, I decided I'm gonna use alcohol and microfiber cloth and clean up everywhere a little dust I see accumulated over here. All right, before I was um, continued to assembling all together, uh, all back. Uh, together, I decided to clean up um, the focus assembly. Also, I uh, using my uh, this blowing thingy, I blow this sensor, this is optical sensor, just to make sure that doesn't have any dust accumulation, have to like clean this up, blow some uh, potential dust out, because I didn't really see any dust in here, but yeah, just in case. Alrighty, I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, so now let's try to continue assembling all this in one piece. Okay. Now it's very important to memorize the screws. You are placing and the, and the, the screws and the placement of the screws, very important because if you use the wrong screw, it won't be tight enough. If it's too short screw, it again won't be tight enough. I don't know what the exact torque, but I do by uh, eyeballing. <laughs> yeah. Double check, by the way, before proceeding, that focusing is actually working by observing through this uh, front element. Check. You see the movement of the lens inside when you rotate this barrel. Okay. So now we have to match this um, zoom uh, no, pin 
with the uh, appropriate place over there the <laughs> but finding appropriate place may not be that easy as I thought that would be so that would be trial and error here okay so this is how it's supposed to be now let's see if zoom is actually working no it is not oh it is actually working observe perfect make sure you don't touch that <laughs> rear element of this uh, of that zoom assembly and as you see using its own weight this kind of pulls down so better just let it go down okay make sure you always operate with your clean hands even with your clean gloves because over here there's a lot of lube um, from the uh, little gears over here in this this sprockets and gears okay so now I have to put the right uh, how many one two three four five five screws back where they supposed to be so now I have a little bit different angle and I'm gonna be placing those screws where they're supposed to go So I'm not going to tighten everything yet, it's the wrong one, so make sure everything is nice and tight, maybe you can use different screwdriver if this doesn't give you enough leverage to tighten all screws properly. Yes, I put different angle for the camera, but still try to kind of tilt it towards the observer. Okay, so when I was assembling this element, I noticed the following problem. Okay, so these are the zoom. Uh, I think these are the zoom uh, because they don't rotate when you focus. So these are the zoom lamels. Essentially, this slider slides over here and indicates to the camera where the zoom what is the current zoom position so this is this little guy over here like one two three number three from this end is completely bent I'm curious why this has happened first of all secondly this surface is sort of kind of a little bit dirty so I'm gonna clean this up and also I'm gonna straighten this little guy over here first you're gonna clean it up we take some rubbing alcohol on the q-tip and clean this very nicely and looks so much better now I'm just wondering why it's so ugly looking like is if someone was actually touching this lens with dirty sorry this surface is dirty hands okay very important not to leave any like residue so these surfaces are pretty dirty so now after I finish cleaning that I can just clean them to make sure it's, it's not gonna spread whatever crud is here also to make sure all this dust not gonna spread around the lens anymore just gonna collect it's not that much really it's not that dirty but still Okay, well, a little some door, this door, dirt. Okay, let's ditch it. Let's remove any remaining hairs if you see any using your manometer tools you have. Now let's try to straighten this little. This is a very delicate job, so make sure you're not gonna mess it up otherwise, because you don't really have second chance here. Or I do not have second chance. So I try to be as gentle as possible and same time not to mess up already existing 
little sliders. Okay, I think that would do. Okay, let's give it a shot. Yes, that looks so much better. You see, at least it slides over the um, uh, contacts over there. Not another very, very important not to bend it up. If you bend it up, it's game over because this never gonna get make proper contact, and you won't be able to bend it back. You would have to completely remove all this. Okay, bend them properly down, and then reassemble. It's just much more hassle. Just not do it. Okay, well, this is looking good. So next very important step is assemble this rear focusing element assembly. It's very important over here, oh, it's so dark, not to have any dirt. So now it will try to clean it up. One thing is bothers me, like this thing is completely wobbly, it's, it can wrap my mind around, like look, I think this is diaphragm element and it's actually pretty cool, it's here, if it's gonna, it's gonna fail, all this, oh my god, that's like, no screws, if it's gonna fail it's easy to get to it, but, well, better not to fail, this rear element is assembled, but and I see, this is wobbly, like, what the? And I didn't, like, there is no screws, it's nothing holding it. It's bizarre, it is bizarre. Okay, so this element has a little bit of dust, so I'm gonna use my cleaner. I'm gonna try to blow it off, like this. <laughs> actually looks so much better if you have something some lens like this you can just double check you know if there is any like you know any dirt uh, remain remaining by the way rear of this is very dirty I don't know if you see it it's very dirty so this clearly has to be addressed uh, just not sure when I go I'm gonna address it after I place it back on um, over here, it'll be easier to handle. M make sure not like, no, not gonna mangle this side. Okay, uh, looks like we don't have enough vertical space right here. We take some rubbing alcohol on the Q-tip and clean this very nicely. And looks so much better now. I'm just wondering why it's so ugly looking. Like, is if someone was actually touching this lens with dirty, sorry, this surface with dirty hands. Okay, very important not to leave any like residue. So, these surfaces are pretty dirty, so now after I finish cleaning that, I can just clean them to make sure it's, it's not gonna spread whatever crud is here. Also to make sure all this dust not gonna spread around the lens anymore. Just gonna collect. And it's not that much really, it's not that dirty, but still. Okay, well there is some door this door dirt. Okay, let's ditch it. Let's remove any remaining hairs if you see any using the or whatever. Tools you have now. Let's try to straighten this little. This is a very delicate job, so make sure you're not gonna mess it up. Otherwise, because you don't really have second chance here, or I do not have second chance. So I try to. Be as gentle as possible, and same time not to mess up already existing little sliders. Okay, I think that would do. Okay, let's 
give it a shot. Yes, that looks so much better. You see, at least it slides over the um, uh, contacts over there. Not another very, very important not to bend it up. If you bend it up, it's game over because this never gonna get make proper contact, and you won't be able to bend it back. You would have to completely remove all this. Okay bend them properly down and then reassemble it's just much more hustle just not do it okay well, this is looking good so next very important step is assemble this rear focusing element assembly it's very important over here oh, it's so dark not to have any dirt, so now it will try to clean it up. One thing is bothers me, like this thing is completely wobbly. It's, it can wrap my mind around. Like, look, I think this is diaphragm element, and it's actually pretty cool. It's here. If it's gonna, it's gonna fail. All this. Oh my god, that's like no screws. If it's gonna fail, it's easy to get to it. But. Well, better not to fail. This rear element is assembled, but and I see this is wobbly. Like, what? The? And I didn't like. There is no screws. It's nothing holding it. It's bizarre. It is bizarre. Okay, so this element has a little bit of dust. So I'm gonna use my cleaner. I'm gonna try to blow it off like this. This actually looks so much better. If you have something, some lens like this, you can just double check, you know, if there is any, like, you know, any dirt uh, remain, remaining. By the way, rear of this is very dirty. I don't know if you see it. It's very dirty. So this clearly has to be addressed. Uh, just not sure when. I go I'm gonna address it after I place it back on um, over here. It'll be easier to handle. M make sure not, like, not, not gonna mangle this side. Okay, uh, looks like we don't have enough vertical space right here.
Okay, let's try to clean up the rear element. Have this lens pan stuff. It's not that dirty, so um, you can use this lens pans this side. This side I'm not gonna use it, which is like microfiber little sponge. Um, it's not that dirty. It's actually looking relatively good here. And there was just a bunch of dust left, one dot, which uh, not dust, some kind of spit or whatever. Not gonna even bother about it. Probably gonna do more harm than good. So if you have such a blower, you can just blow some dust, which is can be helpful as well. So it looks to me relatively clean or pretty clean. So now let's put this element back. It has this line over here which is supposed to match. with this line over here and that's it and while we just doing that we already introduced some dust here and some fibers whatever can they came from all right so now it's not easy because those screws all the way all the way down there you're gonna use the these white ones and I need probably a longer screwdriver, just like this one. Good, it's magnetized, it's very handy. Okay. Yeah, it's really hard to see. Good, that's actually quite smart. On these surfaces, where, where the dark surfaces, they use metal screws, uh, shiny screws, and on white surfaces, they use dark screws, which is kind of actually quite smart. Okay, found one. I'm not gonna tighten them all the way. Mm -hmm. Wow, I have the studio light and it's still barely I can see down there. Probably I need some sort of headlamp. That's a good idea to use a headlamp. Hello. Okay, what do we have here? Alright, another one. And probably one supposed to be behind. It's just a cross, but I don't see. Okay, now I see. Okay, just tighten all them up, secure them that they're not foldable. Okay, that's not the wrong one. It's the right one. Yeah, unfortunately, I cannot really show you that, but yeah, they are they're very dark inside. Nice. Okay, next step is to put this bayonet ring back on. It's actually quite dirty as well. Try to wipe it. Uh, if I do any good here, no. It just collects more junk. Maybe some tape. It would be nice to use tape. This is supposed to be right here. Just like that. Hmm, looks like contacts a bit beat up. I need to clean them up and make sure. Wow, they are really beat up. Hmm. 
Okay, so there are one, two, three screws on the perimeter here. Okay, it looks like I didn't put it the right way. So that's that's the right way. Need to match. Okay. But before I do that, I need to put this first. So this, actually, it's probably a good idea to screw this in to secure it first. So it has a little guide pin over here, which has to match with this little pin. So you have to just do like this. And the rear lens element is so close, so imagine if you would use your fingers it would be all over the lens. Now I take one of those tiny self toppers not to over tighten, that's very important Alright, now we insert from the top this cover and secure it as well. Let's check our rear element, if it's dirty or not, I'm gonna try to clean it up, it doesn't matter, it's not that dirty, okay, it's not that dirty, I didn't put any fingerprints, it's just few dust specks which I'm gonna clean up after I secure all that in place, okay, this is how it's supposed to be secured, and let's take So bayonet is very important to be properly secured as well because if the, the distance is is different than it used to be that your lens not going to be focusing properly it's very important and never actually secure it all the way through put all screws like this it's not secured Just better now. Start securing it a little bit across, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Then let's go again, 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 and again. So this is gonna make sure that all that is properly tightened and not it doesn't have any like tilt or angle okay so we are assembled our lens I'm not gonna put this rubber thing yet I'm gonna test it first and see how it goes okay, let's first test if it uh, zooms in and out it's really hard to see yes it does so if you look at this let me show you yes it does zooms in and out Okay, now let's see if it focuses properly, at least mechanically. 
Well, something is moving inside, so yeah. Okay, well, that's all good and dandy. Hmm. Coffee is getting cold. How am I? Oldest actually camera I have for test. This is Canon 40D. I, I love this camera. Actually, some of my photos which were in National Geographic and Canadian Geographic were captured in this camera, believe you or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's actually it's really short, so I don't know where to focus. Let's focus further away. Focuses. Yeah, I need to change the smaller distance. Okay, this is obviously awkward um, situation when you, well, I don't have really much distance here to test. So I would have to test this, um, I put a rubber band uh, and I test it outside tomorrow, for example, in the, tomorrow will be a nice, nice day. I'm gonna test this lens to see if it hunts like crazy or not, because uh, I don't really see any issue with it, apart the broken um, piece of um, casing like it in this area but I don't think that's a big deal it's not supposed to be a big deal it's, it's just a structural but who knows also I clean up some contacts and also gonna clean up contacts over here on the bayonet but well, beside that it's uh, good so far it works it's promising so that was actually a long one uh, like <laughs> as many as my any uh, my as similar to my other repair videos is this thing never actually take a little bit of time unless it's something very trivial so yeah good repair video good repair process is gonna take some time especially with such a complex thing like this lens and you don't want to rush anything so i would never advise you to rush if you don't know how to do it slow down read look in the internet uh, see how other people done it before rushing anywhere if you rush you're gonna break something and I did I broke something uh, before in my life so I would suggest you just slow down and uh, do your research before doing some uh, working on some uh, complicated equipment or comp equipment which require a uh, lot of attention so thank you guys for watching um uh, i hope you like this sort of repair videos because sometimes they are long and i'm apologizing for that but if you want it to be more or less thorough that has to be long i'll try to index this video for example to show where the assembling starts uh, where the autofocus module starts and things like that just to people to go to a specific section if they are interested but otherwise thank you for watching and see you next time in another episode of inside out electronics Italian coffee, even cold, still pretty good.